Sister Silverine, once again, thank you for making time with me to have these discussions on the topic of parental alienation. And of course, this program is uh, a venture of the Parental Alienation Awareness International Network, PAIN. And we look specifically at the issues around parental alienation. And I had some questions on the marital issues that you see with people. That a lot of people come to you with marital problems. And how do you think those problems affect the children of the marriages? I think this is a very serious issue where a couple never really thinks or, or is conscious of where not only they suffer in a relationship or in a bad relationship, but even the children of that relationship suffers a lot. And yes, each child or even the children of these spouses who are in situations which is not pleasant tend to really take stress, tension and the distress from the situation. So imagine you are a child and you are seeing your parents arguing, quarreling, under stress, under tension. None of them on either side is happy. How can you as a child be happy? And so yes, the mind of that child that is in distress can never function the way it needs to function. Because once the mind is disturbed, then even the thinking process, the intellectual ability of the child is also damaged. Yes, worries, stress, tension, distress, hurts, pains, all damages our mental, our emotional, and our intellectual abilities. Because any child that is in distress can never think properly, can never think clearly. And whoever not thinking clearly or are not able to think clearly would naturally not take correct decisions. And so you would realize that children who are under these types of stress of bad relationships, even their schoolwork, their homework, their progress in schools would be backward. Means they will not be able to study well and even produce as they are expected. Any child that is having, let's call it background issues, whether it is relationship-wise, whether it is under any sickness, disease, or any kind of mental pressures or emotional pressures, the minds of these children, the intellect of these children can never work in the way we expect them to. And so you will find that they are not progressing at school or they are not able to move forward because with these problems in their mind, it makes them, let's call it, get stuck. And so they are not able to evolve. They're not able to develop themselves the way they would like to or the way they should. And of course, on the other side, parents expect that the children do well in school. Parents expect that the children pass all their exams and progress well. Because parents does not understand how their behaviors, their nature, their habits affects a child. Let's take for example, 
a child that has an alcoholic father or even a child whose parent would have committed a murder or some crime. The pressures that such children face in society are pressures that really disturb that child's learning ability. Because imagine your child in school being faced with the pressure of, well, your father is a murderer or your father is an alcoholic. Can you imagine what goes through the mind of that child? That child have to live with such a stigma. My father was or is a murderer. My father was in prison. Or my father is an alcoholic. This actually destroys the self-esteem of any child. Anyone for that matter of fact. So before we go into these kinds of let's say, conflictive relationships, we should be able to look at the pros and the cons, which means the outcome of our actions. If I do this, if I commit this act, what could be the result? How is my children, <clears throat> how would my children be able to live in a society? If I am an alcoholic, what steps or what example am I setting for my child, my sons, or my children? How are my children going to face a society knowing that I am a criminal, for example? So there are so many ways, so many things that really need attention. And the first thing is our relationships. Because in these times, I have seen where the majority of the problems at the moment is relationship problems. Relationships between wife and husband. Relationship between even mother and daughters. Fathers and sons. These are the main ones. The majority are relationships pair of um, spouses, wives and husbands. Because behind all the problems, I have realized that expectation was the main problem. Each expecting from each other, and none are able to fulfill the expectation of the other. And this is what leads to the majority of problems. We are not able to fulfill the responsibilities, for example. Now, if I take a, not an oath, but I take up a responsibility to take care of someone else's daughter as my wife, am I really ready to fulfill that responsibility? And what does it ent entail being a husband? Or for a wife, what does it entail being a wife? So the responsibilities of a husband towards his wife as well as a wife towards the husband, that responsibility is not clear. Which means in many occasions, a husband just look at the physical aspect. Physical aspect means they look at, okay, this is a beautiful woman. I wish I had her as my spouse my wife. But behind the physical beauty, there are other behaviors and natures that you are not aware of. And to impress anyone, we give off our best. Even if we have to hide the defects. So we hide our not so good nature. We hide our unpleasant behaviors and we only project or we pretend pretend to project all the good that we have and then when we get familiar with the person then the good then the other part starts coming out as we say you know you never know someone unless you live with them 
So the pretend, the pretext or that um, pretending nature that we have to only give off our best before the marriage cannot last for long. And so after marriage, we say the true color starts showing which means our true need just starts coming out. And then the other side realizes that this is not the person I know. What I saw before and what I'm seeing now is two different things. So this thing of trust, this thing of honesty, is I think the most important uh, concepts or most important, I would say, values that is needed in a relationship. Trust, number one, and being honest to yourself. When you are honest to yourself, you will not pretend to be something which you are not. So you are not giving someone else a false identity of yourself. A false identity means that you pretend to be something in front of him or her, but in the background, you know, that is not who you are. So what you're doing there? You're giving someone a false impression of yourself. And that false impression eventually will come out. Because since it is not your original self or your natural nature, in the correct time, your natural nature will start emerging. And that's when we say that only after marriage you begin to see the true colors of the person. So trust, honesty, being honest to yourself. And once you're honest, once you are trustworthy, then you could have a beautiful marriage. Why not? A beautiful marriage just needs good values, good principles, and accepting each other for who they are and what they are. If after you get involved in a relationship that you realize was not a truthful relationship, it was not an honest relationship, that person was not honest to you, then now because you make your decision, you will have to learn to live with it. And of course, if it reaches such a point where you are not able to live with your decision, then it's better you part ways. Better you part ways instead of staying in relationships that causes much more distress. So, what are some of the guidelines you would give to young people or people who are considering getting married or going to, into a serious relationship where they will have children involved and, and it will be, let's say, affecting a lot of people's lives. What advice would you give to young people? Nice. So my advice is before you go into a relationship, you really have to sit and think and reflect. You know, if I take this step, then what could be the result? And am I really ready to go down that road? Or how prepared am I financially, mentally, and emotionally to take this big step because marriage is not a small step. Marriage is a question of lives. And it's not only my life or someone else's life. Because whoever we are connected to, if we begin to suffer, Everyone around us, if a couple is suffering, not only they suffers. If they have parents, the parents also suffers. If they have brothers and sisters, nieces, nephews, there are so many people who suffers because of one person. If one person in your household is not well, everyone suffers. In the same way, a relationship is of many people. And so, every step you take, it affects those around you and those who are connected to you. 
if your good friend, for example, took a wrong decision, and you know we say his life is messed up, you as a good friend will not like to see your friend going down the road. You wish that you could help him. You wish there was something that you could do to help him. And if you are not able to help him, you also begin to suffer. So how many people are suffering because of one person? So taking the right decision is so, so important. It is important not only for you. And so to take that right decision or the correct decision, that will involve your whole life ahead. You really need to sit, think properly. And so when the mind is calm, in that calm state of mind, you could see the result of your decisions. In a calm state of mind, you will be able to take the right decision. In a calm state of mind, you will be able to know and tell if this is the moment or not. But really do take time hmm, to reflect and to see hmm, what could be the result of your decision. If you think that you are not ready, it is not the time because it's not only a decision of going into a marriage that is important, but am I really financially, emotionally, and mentally stable in such a way that if I take that step into a relationship, I will be comfortable. Comfortable in the sense that financially, I can help myself, emotionally or mentally, I am able to face with whatever problem they may be. And so there is so, so many preparations that is needed to be made. Many steps you need to take before you go into a relationship or before you take a decision. So yes, before you make, you take that next step towards your relationships or your life ahead, I should say, seek advice. Hmm? Seek or talk to someone who you think may give you a good, um, a good advice, a good suggestion, or the good ideas, you know, what, what you can do to improve yourself before you make that decision or take that decision. It's always good to, to take advice. Advice is nothing but hmm? just information that may help you to think better, to think wise to think clearly and so when you have that that clear thinking or that clear mindset that yes this is what I could do what I need to do before I step into this this next phase in my life then you go for it once you are secure in your mind you are secure financially you know that if you go into the, that next step of your life, you are, you are safe, then why not go ahead and do it? But understand that preparation is needed. Because if you find yourself in such a situation where you are not able to, let's say financially or even emotionally, sustain your relationship, then if children come into that relationship, they will also start suffering. So you're not only thinking about yourself and your spouse at that moment, but you're thinking about those who are going to come out of this relationship. So any bad decision will cause a lot of sorrow, hurt, suffering to many, not to yourself. And so even thinking about only you in any relationship is selfishness. To think about your happiness only is being selfish because a relationship means more than one. And just as you are entering into a relationship in order to be happy, maybe, maybe to get love or be loved, you also have to be willing 
to give love. And love means to accept someone for how they are, who they are. A relationship is not of one person, but a relationship is of two or more people. So if I'm thinking about someone else, bringing someone into my life, I have to understand that whoever I bring into my life, I also have to appreciate them, accept them for who they are, which means I have to learn to love them for what they are and who they are. And so I now invite you into a short reflection where we are going to think about the relationship we are in. And for the next few minutes, let us just disconnect our thoughts and our attention from everything external. And let's think about ourselves. And as I think about myself, I ask myself, how happy am I? And if I am not happy, then who or what am I allowing to disturb my happiness? If I am not happy, then who am I allowing to enter into my mind and rob me of my happiness? And as I reflect, I realize that I have often allowed the ideas, the opinions of others to influence me in such a way that their influence over me destroys my happiness. We often tend to think that if I don't do what others say, I will lose that relationship. But if I have to listen to everyone, then when will I start listening to myself? And when I start listening to myself, I begin to realize that what I am searching for in others is already within me. And as I learn to go within and to come into touch with my inner source of virtues and values, I begin to allow my inner goodness, my inner values and virtues to emerge. And so the love that I seek externally is the love that is already within me. The happiness that I seek from others 
is the happiness that is already within me. And as I learn to go within, I begin to come into touch with my own reality. And that reality is that I have what I need, be it peace of mind, be it happiness, be it love, be it contentment. It's all within me. And as I learn to go within, I reflect upon myself. I allow these inner qualities to emerge. I begin to access from within me these beautiful virtues and values. In this way, whenever I feel peaceless, unloved, or unhappy, I just take some time out to sit in silence, reflect on myself, and in that calm state of mind, I will be able to take the right decisions. In that calm state of mind, my mind, my intellect, my reasoning power, my power to analyze, will all start working in the right way. Thank you. Sampex Limited, networking societies for a better future.